you're saying I can't do this, like I, I can't do it, man, today is too hard, I can't do it, surely, surely, you cannot do it, you, right. you're not going to do it, you're speaking, you can't do something right away, and I believe that, I believe our words have power behind them, yeah. and they're God, they're given by the Spirit, so yeah. right there we have this, and, I, and I'm going to get to a proof, and God changed his name to Abraham, and gave him, from the Hebrew word, the ha, the breath of life in Hebrew, they gave him life through them words and changed his name. Not just the way you spell it, not just the way we read it, not the words that we see. He gave a spirit into his name and changed him from that day forward and gave him another name. And whenever we accept, when we accept Jesus into our hearts, it wasn't that everybody has this definitive moment almost or something that they can attest to when they truly are changed that you could say it was like I was changed when that happened. It could have been an event. It could have been a preacher, a pastor. It could have been your mother. It could have been a sign given from God. But you felt from that day forward it was changed. Right? Just like the breath of God. Sarah, there's a, there's a lady, it was spelled S-A-R-A-I in the Bible, the spelling, got changed to Sarah, had the A-H added, and it's like, it's like Latin and how we, how we perceive the man, the dominance, and the, you know, and we go to how things are spelled, that's the way we use language, but the A-H is there, it was the ha that was given to her name, and from that day forward she was changed. Almost is like we're parabling the change of the twinkling of an eye, you know. And when we look at how we speak things to people on a common and daily basis, I see and I hear and with our ears for us to have eyes to see and ears to hear. We hear a lot of nasty stuff going on. And they may be through the things we just prayed about through our kids, through our children. And we hear things that come out of our mouths. And I believe that for the children of God, and we all believe that, Whenever we're saying these things and hearing these things, they have power behind those words. We don't say things for not. You know, we, 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 people perceive the way we are, and if we claim to be the children of God, and we even have talking that gossip with our friend because it feels good. It feels good when I, if, I don't know why, but when we're at work in, a, in an environment where we feel comfortable, we like to, we'll talk about this other person. And it, it happens. And these are things we pray about. It, 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 it's, it's indignation in our hearts. It's not good. And we're, because we're in a comfortable place with somebody. It's our best friends. We go way, way back. And we talk about the old days. You know, and we talk about these things. And we're speaking living spirits into other children's ears. The children of God's ears. And the way they can... We have to be careful about that. I really feel that. That the way we're saying things to our friends, to our family, because... If you singularly, if I could connect a dot on a map and give it to Pat right now, I could tie a long string to that. I could tie a string and I could literally connect a singularly, a singular line to where Pat is. I could take that dot and give it to Rashad in Ohio. Or, and I could take that dot and it could go all the way from Pat to her. And that means that we are quite neighbors. And when it says love your neighbor... It, as if yourself, and that was one of the Ten Commandments, you know, love your neighbor, that also means the way we're talking, the way we're speaking, because did not God speak things into existence? Isn't that the way he first taught us in the Bible from the very first book is the way to talk and the way life is given? And how do we give life to our fellow neighbors? We give the gospel. We preach what Jesus is preaching, and we say the good news. We say the good news. Now, maybe some of that good news behind it has some warnings and has some prophetical ear in hearing to it, but the warnings that we're giving to people, need, like what we already talked about last time, we need to have that good spirit behind it, that there is an everlasting hope, that there is a blessed hope that it was promised to you if you can have the faith. But if we're not speaking the things on a daily basis, if we're not giving what is God's, truly what is to God, and selflessly giving. So, like, I have a great friend that just called me today, a really good friend, and, and he just called me today about how if he is, he is having pulls on his heart, and he is having temptations, and he knows it, the devil's getting at him, and he knows it, and I believe it. And, and he goes, well, how, hey, Matt, well, what did you do to do it? I had told him, you have to tell him like Jesus did. Tell the devil, get behind me. When he was on his walk, get behind me. You are not a 
focus in my life because my focus is upwards to the things that are good. That is my focus. And whenever we have these pools and these people, whenever we're telling them these good, the good news and we're speaking the gospel, we have to say to the devil, get behind me. You, you, you are not, you are not even close to me. I'm ahead of you because of my light that I am searching, because of that, and that, that I keep my eyes upward. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. I got it on video, so I hope you're okay with it. Thank it's you. great. So, Amen. Wow. I, I, I'd like to uh, say thank you, Matt, for that. That's, this is Lynette. And uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wanted to say thank you because... Um, you know, when the Lord has a lot of us that have a gift, you know, God will give us a, you know, a word, a, a prophetic word. Um, like I said, love. If you don't have love, then you're just loud noise. You're just right. talking out and saying nothing. And, you know, it's easy for somebody to sound wise and appear wise and all right. that. But if you're not... if you're not doing that stuff behind closed doors, like my, my, my old pastor used to say, integrity and all of that, who you really are is when nobody's looking, okay? Right. When, what are you doing when nobody's watching you? Right. Um, the gossip part of it, I'd like to address that. A lot of us, um, Matt said that, you know, for some reason that feels good. Well, because naturally in our in our flesh, we're, you know, the flesh, there's sin, God condemns sin in the flesh. Naturally, that's what we do. We, we all uh, have that in us, okay. uh, in the flesh. That's why we have to feed that the spirit because the spirit and the flesh fight against one another. So you know when you're in the flesh because what comes out of the flesh? Murders and rivalings and drunkenness and orgies and witchcraft and all that else, that kind of stuff. All that stuff is in the flesh. So it's natural for, you know, that's why we have to renew our minds. And the main thing, thank you, Holy Spirit, the Lord is telling me to stick to the point because I have a tendency to get off a uh, track. The main thing is if you walk in love, if you have that intimacy with God the Father, there is, it, is, it is going to be impossible for me to be gossiping about anybody or jealous or anything. It's just like Pat said, it touches. When you have love, when you have that intimacy with the Father, everything you do, it's in your voice, it's in your face, it's in your everything you do. So the, the number one thing is love. Even if you have to give a hard word, you give it in love. Amen. That's right. I just want to say that. That's right. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate